If you're in an RV, odds are you're trying to conserve some space. And even though RVs do involve quite a bit of maintenance and repairs, you're probably trying to keep that toolbox pretty small. But today I'm gonna to tell you the one tool that I would ultimately tell you to have in your RV, it's gonna be the most useful tool. And it doesn't really matter what your skill level is. And that tool is a multimeter. No matter your skill level, a multimeter is going to be the most important tool you're gonna use in your RV. Not only is it gonna help you troubleshoot and figure out what's going on with things when they quit working, which is kind of inevitable in this industry, but it's also gonna help you RV a little bit safer. And we're gonna get into that. I'm also gonna cover what type of multimeter you need, what's gonna be the easiest for you to use, and no, you don't have to go buy a $200, $300 multimeter. You can get away with the $5 one, especially for basic needs. If that's all you can afford, I'd still rather you have that than nothing. I'm also gonna give you a few simple how-tos on you know, different things you can diagnose or check with your multimeter. So stay tuned and I'm gonna tell you why this tool right here should be your best friend. Now, first things first, let's keep everybody riding along. I know some people see stuff like this and they immediately think I'm trying to sell you something. I'm not. Um, I do have recommendations for multimeters, but my wish is just that you have one in your RV. So I do have a few different multimeters here, including the one that I use every single day. So we'll talk about the differences between these and help you make a decision on which one you need. And again, we're gonna talk about what you can do with them. First things first, that's why you're here. Let's talk about why. Why in the world do you need a multimeter? You're not an electrician, you're not Bob the Builder. What do you need this for? Well, if anything, to just check things, make sure they're safe. I often talk about how low and high voltages when you're plugged in at the campground can damage many things in your RV. They can also be dangerous. So number one, just being able to check things. You know, you don't, even if you have a guy, you love a service center or you got a mobile guy, that comes out and does all your repairs and you're fine with that, they can't always be there. So sometimes you just have to verify something is safe to plug into or you're getting the proper voltage in your RV or the proper charge is making it to your battery. You can do all of that very simply with a multimeter. Now every multimeter is gonna be a little bit different as far as its features and how it does things, but all of them do the same thing. They check for voltage, which is the most common thing you're gonna be doing. But even some simple repairs and troubleshooting in your RV, it's a lot simpler than you think it is. So stick around and I'm gonna show you. First things first, we're gonna talk about the differences between all these meters, right? Do, do you need this $125 meter or does this $6 meter work just fine? And I'm gonna give you an answer that you're probably gonna be surprised to hear. Yes, although as a technician, I would tell every technician who's getting into the industry, you need a Klein CL800, right? Um, it does the basics, it does voltage, it can check for continuity, it reads amps, but there's a big thing that this one does differently than a lot of these meters do, and that is having an amp clamp. Now, when you're getting deep into troubleshooting and trying to figure things out, an amp clamp is gonna be super beneficial. I can take this, wrap it around a cable, and I can see how much amperage is moving through it without ever disconnecting anything. The main reason I tell you the Klein CL800 is the creme de la creme, is a lot of these meters do have an amp clamp, but they only do AC amps. This does DC amps, and working with big battery banks and hydraulic systems and RVs, being able to see the amperage on a DC circuit is super important. Another big feature that you're gonna find on a lot of Klein multimeters is low Z. Now low Z is probably whew, right over your head, but as a technician, it's going to help you identify electrical faults that might, you might get fooled by this one here. But if you're a technician or your electrical skills are up there a little bit, Klein CL800. But again, I'm not here to sell you the biggest and the baddest because odds are you don't really need it for the basic stuff. Now, if you've been around my channel for a little bit, you know that the one that I recommend to RV owners is going to be the Klein MM450. Um, this one I actually do have on my Amazon storefront by the end of this video, if you're convinced you need a multimeter as well, this is the one I'd recommend to you. It's very affordable. It's made by Klein still, so it's a company with a good reputation in this industry, the electrical industry. It has very big, easy to read numbers, but most of all, it is auto ranging. Let's talk about auto ranging. And there's a lot of debate on whether auto ranging is good or bad for somebody who's a newbie, but hopefully I can help you with that a little bit. So I want you to take a close look at this cheap, like $6 Harbor Freight multimeter 
and this roughly $40 to $50 multimeter. One, you can see the readouts are completely different. I don't know if the camera's picking up that readout very well. I know it does it at a certain angle, so I'll move it a little bit, make sure you can pick that up on the camera. But outside of the screen size, look at the dial where your settings are. And I want you to notice this has a lot more different settings, right? This one does not. This one just has, say, volts here, which is the most common thing you're going to use is checking for volts. But if you look over here, you have DC volts, and there's like five or six different settings. AC voltage, there's two different settings. It, it can get a little confusing if you're not familiar. Now, auto ranging means you're going to turn it on volts. You're going to select whether or not you're doing AC or DC volts, and it is going to auto range. It is going to automatically determine the range. That is what these numbers are is the range. So if you're checking for DC volts, let's say like a battery, you're gonna set it to 20, meaning you're looking for under 20 volts, or if you're looking for under 200 or under 250. It can get really confusing when you're looking at it that way, and sometimes people can get a little thrown off. But I will tell you an auto ranging multimeter, which the reason we're talking so much about this is this is a big deciding factor is you'll see meters that claim they're auto ranging or non-auto ranging. Auto ranging meters can be just as confusing, and that is because of that decimal. So let's say we were looking at this right here, which I really hope this is showing up on screen. I'm actually gonna do a quick check. So let's say we were checking some voltage. Right now you can see the MV at the bottom of the screen, which is millivolts. Again, it's auto ranging, so it's gonna determine what type of voltage you're looking for on its own. Well, if the circuit didn't have any voltage, there was a little phantom voltage in there, this might read like, 10 millivolts, but if you're not paying attention down here, you might think, well, I have 10 volts and that will screw you up. So with an auto ranging meter, you just need to pay close attention to where the decimal is and whether it's saying volts, millivolts, or anything like that. That is where these can uh, sometimes trick you. But again, once you know that little tidbit of information, just be aware that when you're checking for voltage, whether it be AC or DC, you have to make sure it doesn't say millivolts at the bottom. You know, again, if you're checking AC voltage, you're looking for 120 volts. Well, if it's at 108 millivolts, you might, you know, get a little confused. But again, just pay attention to where that volts uh, logo is at the bottom or millivolts and make sure that you're actually reading a good, you know, say on a battery, a good 12 volts or on an AC circuit, a good 120 volts. Now, another nice thing, uh, kind of in the auto ranging category that this meter does that you won't find on cheaper meters is on all multimeters, you'll actually see multiple ports that your leads, which are the wires that come off of it. Um, you'll, you'll see where there's multiple points that those can connect. And these both look the same, there's three. Now, if you're gonna read amps, you might have to switch it or ohms, you might have to change the configuration of where the cables go. But let me show you something that this meter does that no other meter does. If you're ever confused about that and you're starting to learn new things, let's say we go to voltage, see those two green lights right there? It's telling me where my leads need to connect. So I know my red one's gonna go to that one and my black one is gonna go to that one. Right? So if we unplug that, let's say we're gonna check for continuity. It's gonna do the same thing and show you. And as you change through settings, it's going to change how it does. Now, this is where it's gonna change when we go to check amperage, it's gonna show you. Now my black lead needs to go here and my red lead needs to go here. This is like a, almost a dummy proof multimeter, which is why I recommend this one so often. And then you can actually go super old school and bare bones and you can get an analog multimeter. You can pick one of these things up for like five bucks sometimes. And I'll tell you, you probably don't want this one unless you're an experienced technician. As you can see, you got a graph with a bunch of different numbers all over the place. This can get really confusing to somebody who's especially who's learning or just trying to see some basic stuff. But if you are a skilled technician or an entry level technician, throw one of these in your kit because these will actually find some things and see some things that a digital multimeter can't see. So now let's take a look at an example of what we could potentially do with a multimeter that might benefit you. Now, as you can see here, I have a battery. This is a very small battery. Uh, it's kind of like the one you're gonna see on your RV, just a lot smaller. Now, batteries use DC voltage. I actually have a great video on understanding the difference between your DC electrical system and AC electrical system, if you wanna check that out. So we know a battery is DC, so we'll go to our meter here, and then I'm simply going to press my select button here, 
and as you can see it went to DC volts. From there now we can verify if we're having 12 volt issues we can see what our battery's got. And this battery has got uh, 3.5 volts which is not good. Again just get a good contact there. 3.584. Now see that decimal there? That's where some of these digital meters might mess you up. You're looking at 3584. There's no way I have 3584. No, it is 3.584. So there's one check alone that you can do with these things. Or let's say one of your outlets in your RV is acting up or not working at all. You can verify that there's power to that outlet and that it's not the device. Again, we go to voltage. Go to AC voltage right there. We're checking for AC. We're going to turn this thing on so that there's actually power going to those outlets. And then we can probe these and verify if there is in fact power. But you can see we have 119.6 volts coming out of there. Again, pay attention to that decimal right there. It's 119.6. This is not 1196. I'm going to keep mentioning that because again, these multimeters, uh, the auto ranging ones, especially when they keep moving the decimal around or going to millivolts can really trick you. Now let's say that outlet we just checked had the converter plugged into it. We know that there's power going to that outlet, which means we should have power coming to this converter, but our battery's not charging. You can use that same meter and you come over here, set it to DC volts, and we can go to the positive and negative terminals on the converter and we can verify what do we have coming out of the converter? We have 14.74 volts coming out of here, which means two things. One, this converter is just fine. And two, this converter needs to be adjusted to lower the voltage. This is brand new out of the box, hasn't even been installed yet, so hasn't been adjusted yet. But say you were replacing the converter, and some of these do have adjustable voltage, depending on if you have lithium or lead acid, you would need a multimeter to properly get on here and check what that voltage is so that you can sit there and fine tune that screw until you get to about 13.5 for a lead acid battery. But using a multimeter isn't just about voltage. Although it might be the most common thing that you're checking in the RV, you know, again, just checking to make sure you have safe voltages. Um, when you get to a campground, you could actually check your pedestal like this one. You can go to your plugs and you can check them and make sure the proper voltage is there before you even plug in. You should be using a surge protector for that. But let's say you're one of the people that don't like using one of those. At very minimum, you could be checking to make sure that they don't have uh, any crazy voltages there. But a multimeter can check for more than just voltage. We're gonna grab this switch here as an example. This is uh, your typical everyday run of the mill light switch or fan switch for an RV. And you know, let's say lights aren't turning on. You know the fuse is good and power should be making it to the light, but you got to check a few things. You have to check the light. You can make sure voltage is making it to the light. If voltage is not making it to the light, well, you might have a bad switch. Let me show you how you can check a switch with a multimeter. You can take that same multimeter. Again, they have multiple features and we're going to go to this little horseshoe feature right here. It usually looks like a horseshoe. That is measuring resistance, uh, sometimes referred to as continuity and continuity is what we're going to be looking for here. Now, if you see, if I complete the circuit between these two wires, I hope my microphone's picking that up and the noise canceling isn't chopping it out, but there's, it's making a beeping noise when I have continuity, right? Or I can also see those numbers changing slightly, but I do have continuity. When it's open, it will read OL. When there's continuity, you'll see some form of resistance there. You want it to be low, hopefully. But the beep is what you're looking for on a lot of these meters, especially this Klein meter. So in the off position, the switch is not completing the circuit. So the switch is open, as we like to call it. So if I were to get my leads on both probes of that switch, we can hear it's beeping, right? It means it's passing power through, or it's capable of passing power through. If we turn the switch off, that goes away. So. So we know this switch is good. If we were sitting here flipping the switch back and forth and we were not able to get it to beep or read any continuity, we would just know we have a bad switch. Now you could also ground your black lead, negative lead off to a frame or a known ground and you can check for power on both sides of the switch 
but it's often a lot easier to actually just make sure you have continuity just like this. Again, this isn't going to quite be a full tutorial on all the different things you can do with your multimeter, although those videos are coming. Um, I'd be happy to show you guys all of the easy troubleshooting you can do with a multimeter. Save yourself a bunch of money. There's a lot of times that you could simply watch a video, whether it be one of mine or any of the other RV space creators out there that are showing you just how simple it is to fix something like a water pump, a furnace, a water heater, but you're missing the one important tool, which is a multimeter. And I say it's the most important tool because a screwdriver, your neighbor might have one of those. A drill, flashlight, a lot of that stuff, most people already have that. Now, when it comes to buying tools that you likely don't already have in your RV, that is going to be a multimeter. And again, don't feel like you need to go buy the expensive one. A $6 Harbor Freight multimeter will do the job. It will do the same job this one does. This one just oftentimes becomes less confusing. And let's be honest, it's a little bit more durable than a $6 meter. If you've got the 50 bucks or so to spend, Klein MM450, again, I do have this one on my Amazon storefront. If you are interested, any purchases you make on my Amazon storefront do help the channel. All of your guys' contributions uh, through there, watching videos, liking them, has given me the ability to give you guys a better environment to educate you. So I greatly appreciate it, guys. I will also have the Klein CL800. If you are a little bit more inclined, you maybe have a little bit of experience with a meter or you do plan on progressing, whether it be through my videos, the online school, or anything like that, I will have the Klein CL800 listed as well. And again, this is an RV tech must have right here because it does all we need to do. So stay tuned, I will have some more diagnostic videos showing you just how easily you can understand your meter and understand how to troubleshoot basic things in your RV. If you guys have any questions or maybe some things you'd like to learn, leave them down in the comments, let me know. I take all of that into consideration for future videos. In the meantime, if you wanna see some more RV tech tips, tricks, and even some tutorials like this one, make sure you guys press that subscribe button.